excuse me, if you just like to um, introduce yourself to those people that, yeah, sure, sure. that don't know you, yeah. please, yeah. yeah. Okay, should I start? Yes, please. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology, which is Sweden's largest technical university. My name is uh, Panilla Ulvengren, I'm an associate professor at, um, at KTH and uh, my subject for my PhD was industrial work science in human technology systems. Currently I'm working at INDEC at the part of KTH under industrial engineering and management. I call my topic integrated risk and performance management. And um, so yeah, so, so I'm currently in, in industrial management and, and a particular safety management. And uh, an overall research area that I'm trying to develop is integrated management in safety critical systems. However, my background is mechanical engineer and I have worked with cognitive engineering and design at a more of an individual and technology level of um, system design and now it's system management but it's still human factors. So the topic of integrated performance management or integrated management systems are uh, relevant and real research need due to the fact that all airlines in the world are facing great system changes due to future single European sky and new requirements for safety management systems. All airlines are under great competition and many under great financial pressure in their businesses. And all airlines due to these changes need to manage change and in order to have their businesses run uh, with um, maintain safety, we also need to manage the risk and performance. And neither of these things can be managed in isolation if you want to not have sub-optimized um, systems. The goal is to develop a system that enables the airline to let reliable and relevant indicators drive sustainable change to improve the operational process and the airline's safety performance. So that's, that's the logic of the management system, is to have measures which you can trust to drive change, but also the most important to actual implement change. And the overall objective of the change is, of course, then to improve the operational process along with the safety. So what is it that needs to be integrated? First of all, the aviation transportation system has a great number of stakeholders. We have seen that since uh, industry and particular businesses like airlines don't have their own research and development department, we need to work together from academia and industry. The overall, as I already mentioned, management of systems risk management, change management, performance management cannot be developed and uh, performed in isolation. Also, these uh, organization levels cannot be focused only at one level at, in the organization. So we also need to integrate processes between the strategic higher management level with more tactical and operational organizational level. If this is not, not enough, we also have need for integrating organizations, for example, airlines and maintenance organizations working together. But even within an organization, between the different departments, there are different production areas that also need to be integrated. And at another level, there are different logics uh, for safety production. When we talk about safety in aviation, it's not only, it's a mix of um, person, passenger and um, person's injury and accidents and uh, the system safety or process safety model. And um, 
So flight safety includes both of these. And there's also different value systems. Because this is not only risk management. It's, it's not only safety risk management. There are other risks and there are other values, for example, to combine quality and, and safety. So this is a really uh, complex, complex task. Um, and uh, risk information produced can be used at different time scale as well, at different levels. Um, and data can be aggregated at different levels of the organization. So this is really a research challenge, and that is, of course, what makes it so much uh, fun. <laughs> um, so the aviation transportation system is a system of systems. We know we have all these stakeholders. Uh, so both operational and organizational processes include the human processes. It's also a complex technical and safety critical system. And we need to understand mechanisms and functionality that influence its outcomes and develop a system that supports operations and sustainable change in lead. For the integration between uh, researchers and academia, um, research and, and practice, we have a tradition. I, I joined uh, the Trinity College team in the HILES project. And SAS, which is a case study that I'm going to discuss, uh, was a partner also in the HILES project. And in the HILES project, one of the outcomes was the success of having integrated um, collaborations between central excellences, between uh, practice and research. And this team already back in 2005 consisted um, more or less of, of me and Morten Igalis, at that time head of safety and a pilot that is all, all, uh, still enrolled in, at KTH doing a PhD. And Stephen Huff, back then he was the chief investigator. Today he's the, he's the head of safety. So this team uh, is still working together today. Um, yeah, so this is a simplified model of the HILAS matrix of having different levels of the organization at strategic, tactical, and operational level, and an integrated uh, management system across. Um, I wanted to draw a picture that actually shows a model going the right way. M most models otherwise show how you produce an accident. So this is a safety production model. Integrating between uh, different organizations, uh, a case study in HILAS um, identified the need and validated it as a rationale that airline say we carry the risk arising out of maintenance, but we don't manage the risk coming from maintenance. And the MROs, uh, to improve and deliver a better service, we have to be open about problems that need to be solved. So the need to integrate between uh, organizations that work together and share risk. Intra integra uh, integration within an organization is due to the fact that I even in an airline, you might have both flight operations, technical operations, and ground operations as the main production areas. And they have very different processes, very different contexts. And uh, so the various safety production models for working in a hangar, working on a ramp, individual injuries, or how does work, quality work, in, in, or process quality in ground operations and technical operations, how does that affect flight operations um, and flight safety? So, so, so that is the issue in integrating different production areas. Um, so going back to the personal system safety. Complex systems, as we know, they are not simple linear systems where causal logic and related dependencies may be represented in more or less a linear process model, or a linear could be described as a linear process. So individual safety with workplace accidents, occupational safety and health, uh, injuries to passengers are all included and actually measured uh, and, and um, chunked together in, in some uh, safety measures. Um, and it's not clear how that is sorted out because they depend on different processes. And this is a common um, problem also in the offshore industry that they, 
they can have a, a measure of safety at the rig uh, based on, on long-term injury on personnel. It doesn't really show the, the status of the, of the actual rig or, or uh, chemical processors or something. So it's, we are not really good at sorting these things out. So the system safety of being more related to, to emergent phenomena or systemic weaknesses where third persons are the victims and uh, we have accidents as the, the worst case outcome. But for many um, airlines, the flight safety actually is defined as uh, a risk coming from both these categories. Value systems, how do we balance and how do we actually perform, um, have a performance management that includes both um, efficiency and quality with uh, production and efficiency. Um, so this is Rasmussen's uh, design envelope, having um, one, one border of unacceptably low efficiency, which could be like business pressure, and uh, an unacceptable workload uh, limit, which could be uh, capability to perform uh, within that organization or business. And you have a point of operation that due to the two vectors of forces coming from both this and this angle is moving the, the point of operations towards an acceptable risk. Any business would actually like to know where you are and they would probably prefer to be here in, in the and close to the unacceptable risk but uh, knowing that you're not too close. And this is a really a performance management issue to know how, how do we know where we are. Uh, from outcome-based to performance-based regulations, uh, that was one of the main changes that airlines are coming on. Um, so the international community and regulations have, due to the fact that it is an ultra-safe system, uh, and it's very difficult to measure safety when we can no longer rely on, on uh, comparing um, uh, airspace in number of accidents or, or airlines in, in number of incidents and so on. The other reason for, for changing from outcome-based to performance-based regulation is to avoid a tick box exercise that regulators actually can make sure that there is a functionality implemented, not only a, a, a binder with, with the rules and, and tick box uh, exercises completed, that we do have this and this and this, um, but now the performance-based regulating will actually uh, require that you can show performance. And this is what's called then safety performance. And you have safety performance set. You have you will set indicators, targets, and requirements. And the indicators are just you know the, what, what is measured, what is considered being an indicator of what affects safety in this organization. A target is set to where you want to be. A directed and intended goal is set. And the requirements are explaining how you're going to reach that target. And the actual measure of the safety performance would be a relative measure of the original indicator and how close to the target you, you uh, can reach in the um, described in your time frame that you have promised to do so. So ICAO says then that effectiveness of the SMS is to show how well it performs and manage to improve the system. So the relative measure is to show that you actually have a change capability. So safety performance could be described as change capability or your ability, your responsiveness to identify needs for change in your system. So how well do you understand the mechanisms that affect safety in your organization? How well do you understand your operations in the organization in order to actually um, direct and, and manage intended uh, changes? So this is very much from the, the Mosca project is uh, relevant to, to the safety performance is to actually enable change because that is what is going to prove the functionality. So this is pretty uh, 
common picture of describing the safety management system. But in the AKO document, it's very well uh, explicitly explained that this needs to be an integrated management system. However, there is a paradox in regulators that can only, they're only allowed to regulate safety, not really the businesses. But safety is dependent on the business, as the design envelope shows. However, we cannot regulate the business, but it depends. So it's very difficult to have an integrated management system for safety um, if, it's not, um, if it's not part of, of the overall organization's business. I think that all these four pillars, the safety policy, of the safety policies that I've seen, it's been very weak in terms of being more of a, what policies usually are, uh, a, a bullet list of declarations of this is where we stand or this is, you know, safety is first and human factors is real and, and, and so on. But I think that it, so much this is the this is the main pillar of the this is what everyone every every other pillar in the SMS or the safety management system is built on the safety policy. I would like to see a more thorough theoretical framework that actually explains the logic behind all the SPI selection. How do you explain uh, how mechanisms and functionalities in your system work? Hence, therefore you have chosen these indicators. What is the safety risk theory applied to, to your uh, indicators, either if it's personal, individual um, safety production models, or is it systemic models, human factors models? Um, because depending on what safety risk theory and, and the organization's risk perception or perception of, of how things actually work in the functionalities of the whole safety management system will directly um, design or give design implications for how you set up your safety risk management, how you set up the safety assurance and the safety promotion and training pillars. Because these all needs to be functioning as a whole together. However, in, even if we are working together between academia and practice, we have not so much to, um, to offer <laughs> in the theory of safety and risk as it is for the actual challenges that um, businesses within high competition and uh, financial pressure are in. The, the theory of safety and risk includes safety management, safety management, safety measurement and monitoring, safety management system as a whole. Um, well, the regulatory regime is, is similar across aviation, and the kinds of safety being managed varies slightly between the different production areas, but it can also vary a lot between an airport and an airline and air traffic controllers. So. And the approach to managing uncertainty is uh, also in part individually uh, decided. So there are many gaps in research and practice. Um, even if you read up on system theory, system design, system management, uh, safety models, human factors models, there are more human factors than safety models are prone to focus on the actual system design to, to give design requirements for, for clever uh, technology for future systems. However, the airlines and the practitioners, they have to deal with what they've got and what is already out there. They also have to take into account a very dynamic operational reality. So even if they have the absolute best and the optimal uh, tools and equipment, the operational pressure might force them, I mean, force them into situations where there is actually no sufficient time to use them properly. So in that sense, some design requirements are, are shooting uh, aside the target. And I'm not going to go through the, the theory in detail, but we are still referring to models from the 50s of independent uh, individual injuries. Um, this is, if, if, if Heinrich had presented 
this results in a bar graph, with one bar being uh, tall uh, of 300 injuries and another 29 and, another, and the last one, one. I don't think it has been used as almost a causality between number of accidents at one level and going to a major injury at the top. But it, because this is just a, a frequency graph of independent events. The shell model focuses on um, what everything that can affect the human performance. And the logic is to say that the, everything that degrades human performance um, will increase risk of human error. But we know that we are moving into a field where human error is one part, but, but to understand how the humans actually almost all the time is contributing to, to uh, a um, successful process outcome. And uh, this focus is, uh, is not um, relevant in all cases. Um, yeah, so the Heinrich pyramid is almost sometimes used as a causality and has the iceberg model of event, incident, accidents, and, and catastrophes. We have the Swiss cheese model of uh, the logic being latent and active errors. And they might very, they, they're good pictures and they, are, uh, they can help to discuss logic, but they don't really apply to, to the actual um, the systems to, to do uh, real uh, industrial challenges. So, but it's still, um, even if it's industrial management, the, the human factors and, and the, the view of, of the humans is, is as actual as always. In Hylas, um, which started in 2005, the KOSMS came about, the first draft uh, was around 2006. So it was we were studying in, uh, the, the development of the SMS in parallel to, to HILAS. Even though HILAS didn't have a particular safety focus because we were already into, we were going beyond the SMS of, of having an integrated approach uh, from the start. We did uh, relate to the KO in terms of having a new approach to human factors as a theoretical framework that could be included in a safety policy. Uh, we had tools that could support understanding the process and the human and the technology that could support system description. Uh, for safety risk management, we were discussing risk at different time scales of time critical or, for example, prospective risk to, to be able to move away from the reactive. Um, and, and much was working on task support for real-time operations. And further than for safety assurance, we were working on already then integrated management systems and uh, collaborative networks and center of excellences for promoting and, and training uh, safety. One particular uh, focus for the, was the prospective risk analysis. It's a theoretical requirement um, how how to, to uh, be able to to analyze risk in a prospective way. So the need for safety performance indicators that were aligned uh, at different levels, very common to every performance management, availability of tools gathering of operational data, uh, because we found that a lot of organizations have a lot of data but don't know how to actually consolidate them or, or use them together. Availability of tools for storing, retrieving, and analyzing these data with the capability of providing targeted and intelligent reports on performance, allowing the identification of action and change requirements. So already we were thinking of having a full cycle of, of change. Um, the requirement for an operational process model that would help understanding and model the actual mechanisms and, and the functionalities of, of, of the particular system um, that was analyzed. And an organizational structure and climate for facilitating staff engagement at all levels. 
So getting the functionality and the, the different pieces to work together. We did uh, to see where, where practice were in relation to the theory. We did a, a, a risk data studies at SAF where we tried to select, we identify the high level SPIs. We tried to identify contributory factors from reports and other theoretical frameworks or, or logics that could explain the contributory factors through external sources. We tried to list the relationships um, between the contributory factors and, and the SPIs. Um, and it was a really good exercise to get through what was available and what was needed. And more or less, we validated the, uh, the listed requirements for the prospective risk analysis that I just showed. A very simple model of, um, you recognize the, the various management uh, processes and the different levels of the organization. This model was never intended other than to, to have as a discussion material, but it was so simple and that is something that practitioners like. So it was actually integrated and uh, translated and further developed within SAS. It doesn't say much, but it did help them to sort out the idea of integrating risk between uh, different protection models. So there were two main areas identified after initiating the flight, uh, SPI is normally measurable, quantifiable, and connected to a procedure not followed, and events with direct impact on flight safety on a certain flight or operation. So these are occurrence reports mainly. And the other was to find SPIs that could be related to this in deficiency in the quality system. So that may jeopardize flight safety if not corrected. So the dependencies of processes leading to flight safety issues. Identified in the quality assurance program more than the current uh, reporting and normally not measurable in the context of impact on a certain fiber operation. It's, it's more measurable in the ground operations or takeoffs. SAS was uh, an impressive research partner because from the theory in HILAT, they went to work and actually in-house developed um, from the beginning, spreadsheets to uh, collect data and make sure that data were collected from all the various sources that they had. Later, they were uh, engaged in a, in a development project with Vision Monitor that actually produced a whole new applications for aviation to allow exactly what the, the pro prospective risk analysis uh, requirement list um, uh, suggested. They also, between this is between HILAS and the Muska project, they also implemented the Flight Safety Quality Board, a structure to use this enabling uh, information technology. And the Flight Safety Quality Board is an organizational structure uh, to make use, yeah, I just said that, um, but it's also it's, uh, aligned with the requirement from ICAO to have a safety review board. So. Um, so an FSQB process was implemented for safety data flow across departments and aggregation from various organizational levels. So this is where MASCA came in. And uh, SAS was the continuing partner. And a lot of things have happened since HILAS. They've gone from 25,000 to 15,000 employees in a few years' time. Uh, it's now when we get in Moscow, the most punctual airline in Europe, and for one month or so, it, I think they also can say it was the world's most punctual airline. So it's obvious that they can manage to change a lot, and they've done so through various top-down initiatives and new regulations were implemented. Uh, but they also implemented lean company-wide to um, address financial pressure and difficulties. So one question was, is are there additional needs for enablers for change since they could do so much. I see some I, did I miss all the questions? I it's a blinking. No, okay. Sorry. I just saw something blinking. I I've never done this webinar before, so I thought maybe I'd missed several questions. 
Um, yeah, so it's obvious that SAS owns many of the policies proposed in uh, the master project for, for managing system change and developing enablers for change capabilities. Uh, 2012, they got an award for innovative safety management system, and much due to, to the, the vision monitor application and implementation of the FSQB using that system. They had also developed the safety measures and indicators. They had the tools for gathering operational data in place. They had tools for storing, retrieving, and analyzing data. Um, so the SAS Master Case Study still set out to further develop an integrated safety performance management framework. And the objectives were to, one part, allow the SPIs to drive actual change, to have a full cycle of change. So for this, there was a need to, to develop a, a full process and a methodology, including operational process model and analysis to understand the logic between the SPIs and dependencies between risk between processes and, and production areas. And whatever we came up with was needed to be aligned with the FSQB structure and process to close the loop for a full cycle. The other part was to integrate for a safe lean um, system. And this was to, to further uh, um, compliance the need to control and balance protection with production, safety and quality, or punctuality and safety. Data analysis to develop model for integrated performance monitoring because if we're going to measure um, a risk or safety that are combined between safety and quality, we also need to, to be able to mix data of very different quality and quantity. And the process for change needed to be integrated with the lean change engine that was already implemented but not really focused on on the same issues that the safety department and, and the SMS focus were. So a lot of risk information production and data sources available. Um, and they, made, they were fed into this vision monitor application daily or monthly, manually, or uh, feed it directly from the systems. There was a lot of data available from both normal operations and, and safety measures, like SDIs. So for the integrated approach, simply put, what was done was that instead of data silos, we integrated data from the various systems, um, from, the, from the different production areas to make it visualized so that one group of people um, could look at the same pictures. So instead of the people silos from the different departments working on their SPIs, uh, making local um, improvements, making local risk um, pictures in the FSQB process, both the people and data were integrated. And uh, so you have, oh, sorry. Yeah, I can read it. Uh, so the benefits that are related to the Matska model of change, this integrated approach um, makes it possible to have learning processes that are made possible by human agents being involved in activities that integrate people and data, both horizontally and vertically, using the vision monitor aviation uh, integrated data pictures in a process uh, that aggregates uh, towards the top. And um, you, I'll, I'll come to the process model in a second. It enables an integrated structure and process and support the creation of a social cohesion and joined up organization because you actually see the performance of the various systems together and you can discuss the reasons for, for, for the various data or the performances um, visualized. This enable processes that support development of a common purpose and holistic understanding of the system function, analysis of, of uh, the data, and understanding and acknowledge how information technologies can help the system. And um, the MASCA framework also 
needs to enable a process for analyzing system functionality and performance, um, enables the ways of assessing needs and result of change. So not only you have to um, identify the needs for change, but also to evaluate if the change was what you hoped for and it actually was an a improvement. And an important thing is to include uh, anticipating potential knock-on effects. It, it didn't introduce risks that was not anticipated to be introduced. So we see that what SAS has been done in-house, and, and um, a lot of it coming from, from uh, HILAS and other parallel work and trends in the industry, uh, are enabling the, some main functionalities of the Muska model to change. Uh, I know we started late, but uh, Siobhan, can you give me an indication of time? Hi, Pernilla. I mean, yeah, it's just a few, but it's 10 to 11 now, so yeah, we're running a little bit behind schedule, but just maybe five minutes or so? Yep. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. So, coming to in, uh, integrating with other uh, strong um, management strategies as lean, as is very popular. We, we, we're not saying that we do so much differently with using different methodologies. That we, there are a lot of commonalities between um, MASCA uh, change management system and, and lean with having um, process modeling and uh, um, root cause analysis and so on. But we do question the completeness of lean uh, for change in aviation. It doesn't have a strong focus on human factors and safety model. And sometimes you can question how, how much is taken into account when you take a management theory um, from one context and implementing it to a new context. So in, in an airline, you have safety. Uh, so are we sharing the value? What is the value for, for, for the safety um, process and waste in comparison to a, a heavy truck manufacturing uh, line? So how can we um, better explain the value and, and um, the value stream mapping in a aviation process? So the, the theoretical framework in, in Hylas and, and Maska is still working on integrating uh, knowledge of humans, putting people at the center. And for lean, that would mean center of lean process improvement. And, and the need for transforming human factors, not just what affects human performance, but how human activity supports system performance in relation to what I mentioned in the safety, old safety models and, and, for example, the shared model. The system, in turn, supports the culture and people make sense of the situation and act accordingly. Um, so, yes, um, Lean also discussed changing the culture into continuous improvement, but it's, it's based on, on other values. Um, in relation to, to getting a full performance uh, management framework, um, you could say that it's coded in a procedural and a structural performance management framework to create a whole. The, the structural part becomes the enabling technologies, for example, the, as I uh, have shown, the vision monitor. Also statistical tools for data analysis, data management, um, and, and uh, yeah, this is all exemplified in the SAS case. Where we are um, developing in, in the overall project is a process model which will support identifying dependencies and process analysis to be used to identify what the most relevant indicators and uh, measures of a certain process should be. So the scope model and tool uh, is an essential part of the structural framework. There's also a need for the organizational structure and indicators list logic in weights, where you need to list all the indicators and measures. Make sure that you have definitions and logic uh, related to um, different, if it's individual or system safety, and how they relate to each other. 
in in the procedural framework we now uh, have come so far, I, I, there is not time enough to explain the, the full. I, I think that the scope model has been already explained um, earlier by TCD and hopefully also on the next webinar. But we are using um, the process analysis tool in development, um, in, in a development uh, prototype to complement this full cycle of change within SAS. So the full cycle could be explained as the, the data is collected and risk assessed. Data is then aggregated to appropriate level of decision making. And the prospective risk analysis supports priority and strategic decision making. Data is then um, this also possible to disaggregate downstreams. And there's an SPI action procedure that uh, activates an action team or a change team to take on whatever SBI has uh, indicated the need for, for change. And then there's a change process where, which is an integrated safe lean using the lean uh, processes already in place but making the um, adaptations to what has been learned in, in Hylos and, and Masca using the scope modeling to analyze the process as well as the anticipated effects of change. Identifying solutions and prepare change implementation also integrated with, with the already the change machine of, of lean. Coordinating and evaluating change with other ongoing change initiatives and evaluation of change to see the effect and continuous improvement of the performance management framework. You hope always that that's also already mentioned in the, the safety assurance in, in an SMS that you also need to work on your um, continuous improvement of, of the system you're using. So the remaining development is to further, now we have a picture of where we want to be and we are working on identifying the, the difficulties where the theories are lacking in safety and risk theory, identifying risk logics for each of the SPI and processes, identifying the risk dependencies between the SPIs and related processes, and this needs to be done at least a proof of concept for, for practitioners to work further on, on their own outside the project time life, lifetime. Uh, each production area, both for quality and safety and for personal safety and safety. And um, now this is just a picture of, of, of trying to visualize the idea of every, pro, every, every SBI or KPI having an, uh, a linked process in where you need to analyze and understand the mechanisms in order to identify relevant SPIs and KPIs and also see how does outcomes of this process, for example, um, affect another process to identify the dependencies and so on for integrating the risk picture. Yeah, and thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Penilla. Thank you very much. You, you managed to cover a lot. <laughs> Thanks a million. Um, anybody Thank any, you. Any questions for Penilla? Hello. Hello. Lino, Lino, we can't hear you very well. Time for one question. Yeah, it will be time for one question. Yeah. The vision monitoring system that I was that designed by SAS in advance, or was that an effect of the Highlands project? Did you hear no, that? It wasn't the. Yeah, I, I think I did. Uh, the vision monitor was a developed in-house stuff after Highlands, but before Masca, and. Uh, nothing really, I mean, a lot of things in Highlands were already, um, was also required as, as the SMS. So the way they did it and, and the way it was set up was very much influenced with the Highlands. Thank you. Okay. Is time for another quick question if there's any more questions? 
there's a, there's a, do you see that, e that, that message from Deutschen, Penilla? To what extent are the contributing factors used in the analysis? If, if on, the, on the chat, there is a, there's a question. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, do you see that? Um, yeah. Um, it's similar to the Boeing peak system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so um, uh, to what extent we there is a need. There are very few. There's enormous amounts of data in the aviation system, but there's very few data for events. And, and risk. So we're very stuck. Of, of, we cannot really validate trends. We cannot really validate the effects of implemented improvements because uh, there, it takes a long time to collect the number of data within only one organization. So uh, I, 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 you know, um, if I rephrase the question to say, we, we want to uh, extend the use of contributing factors also to be able to have antecedents measured so that we can extrapolate the risk data to get a better quantitative and more proactive data picture. Um, and, and if you have, for example, a, a, a thorough post functional analysis of the process, you could identify what influences that particular process. And that's where it's different from, for example, other human factors uh, or uh, models that just identify everything that affects a human. But not everything is relevant for a process. There are some main contributing factors that, um, what is that, makes and breaks that particular process. And those are the factors that we are mostly interested in. What, what, you know, so, so we don't want to model everything and we don't want to have every contributing factor but, but the main ones. Uh, and I'm sorry I don't, I'm not uh, familiar with the Boeing peak uh, procedural event. But, but as I said that also the, the process modeling per se, there are very little, actually uh, the whole performance management logic, there are very little degrees of freedom of, of, of having a, a control loop uh, design and um, so, so I'm sure there are similar similar tools out there. I'll have to look into the procedural event analysis as well. Thank you for the tip. Thank you. Okay, I think we've run out of time there. Nella, thank you again. Thanks very much. And um, we'll see you all, we'll talk to you all next week at the same time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.